know a little bit? A little bit. May I ask what you believe? Um, yeah, but... <laughs> you, believe, you believe in God? Depends how you define God, basically. A singular being, unlike his creation. Neither a man, neither a woman, nor idol, nor statue. Unlike his creation, independent by, ne by necessity. Beyond the universe. Not uh, contingent upon no, him. Not beyond the universe. So beyond? I'm a scientist. So. Okay, yeah. excellent. The rules of science, the laws of physics. Yes. Um, that structure, whatever um, comes from that, wherever that's come from, that to me is, is a god. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I don't relate it to anything to do with humanity. So you, obviously, science does not delve in empir. I mean, it only looks at the empirical side of things. It, it can't really delve into the philosophic philosophy of science, uh, which becomes yeah. a cut of. Uh, it's all about what you can know. It's the empirically yeah. observable. Yeah, yeah. But what we can say, as a man of science that um, and there's an assumption on my part that you believe that the universe came into existence. Um, no, we can't know, I can't know that much. We so, can't know that much. And I, if, if you can't know it, then it is a matter of belief. Okay. And then that's where I step out. So you think there's a possibility of an eternal universe? Um, potentially, yeah. So that would be akin to saying that a mother gives birth to herself? Uh, maybe, yeah. But you can't equate the universe with a, with a human. But wouldn't that be definitively somewhat contradictory? that a mother could give birth to herself. If we we're talking about humans, yeah. Right. And in, in any case, for your, in your situation, yeah. where would you explain the, where the origin of the mother? So what we would say, we, that, I mean, I've given that as an analogy. My understanding was to relate to you yeah. the plausibility of a creator yeah. and why that makes more yeah. sense. Why so? Because definitively, a universe from nothing would make no sense because by definition the universe uh, being about nothing by definition is yeah. the absence of everything and anything hence that becomes somewhat fallacious to even contemplate such an idea the second understanding did the universe create itself which is the analogy which i've given that like a mother yeah. gives birth a singular mother yeah. gives and birth to herself it's a nonsensical... Yeah, nonsensical, yeah. absolutely. So in, instead, it has to come from something else? Yes, in essence, something has to come from something else. Which there's, still no, there's still no answer there, right? Because you're still left with the same idea of where did that something else come from? Precisely, but what we say that, that's something that all prevailing... Was always there. Was always there. Why do we say that? Yeah. Because we look at a process of elimination. Right. A universe from nothing against... So, a universe which created itself against an eternal universe or the only other possibility that something initiated the universe. So if we are to take the understanding of present day science that the universe came into existence yeah. some 13.8 billion years ago, yeah. what you would have to accept unilaterally yeah. is that the universe had a beginning and a miracle supernatural event has okay. occurred. Okay, I agree, I agree. So this is where, where I step out of uh, holding a view, viewpoint. Because my options are, believe something came out of nothing, or believe something has always existed. They are equally nonsensical to me, because like, they don't fit into anything that we really understand. Well, either or, either or has to be true, yeah. as Sherlock Holmes right. once said. So it can't be nonsensical then. Um, Maybe. I think, I think something nonsense can still be true, but they're both very hard to believe. Yeah. But yeah. what I'm saying, then we, then we weigh the probabilities, we look at the scale factor. Right. So what we observe then essentially is the, the analogy of something from nothing definitively would be totally and utterly contradictory. Whereas something which has always existed, a primordial, independent being, unlike his creation, not contingent upon anything, yeah. the universe we know, as you would know, being a scientist, is contingent upon parts. So, maybe. I mean, there are some, there are a few instances in physics um, where we have observed things apparently coming out of nothing. You mean the particles? Yeah, so if you, if you can only perceive things in three dimensions and you have something which moves in four dimensions, you might only see it appear and disappear. When in actual fact it's just travelling through the dimensions that you can observe, as soon as it's travelling its own set. I think so, you're arguing Lawrence Krauss's argument. What's that? Like, uh, some, like nothing could have existed, when what he's essentially saying is that it's something. So even those particles... Even in those cases, those, yeah. those particles have existed from somewhere else. Exactly. <laughs> well said. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I agree. But 
at, at this point, unless you, you know, you can also choose not to believe, right? You say there's this, we have these two options, has to be one of them. And you can also choose to be like, well, unless I have any evidence, I'm going to sit back uh, and only believe in what I can observe. Um, but I, I did find it interesting, your uh, previous comment, yeah. in which um, what we've ob observed it essentially is that particles, there was something there already which initiated those particles coming. So that, yes, potentially. So it couldn't have popped out of nothing because there was already those prerequisite yeah. quantum fields already in place which enabled that particles to pop in and out of existence, the various gravitational pulls and pressures. So, yeah, so therefore, you see why we as theists yeah. are saying there has to be something which has to be independent and this being in itself has to definitively yeah. be beyond the universe and being the very source of where the universal laws come from. What's uh, the alternative of I, I don't know about that last step, about being independent of where the universal laws come from. For me, the universal laws are the things that have always existed. Those, those are the divine um, rules of which everything is built, on, built upon. So divine, they, divine rules? Yeah, I mean, to me, that's, that's divinity to me. It's like absolute truth. So things that, uh, you know, regardless of who's looking at them or how you're measuring them, they're always the same. That's absolute truth. That to me is, is how I define divine. So what you're then saying, these, of these entities or these energies, however you want to turn them, they are themselves conscious and have a will. Because this, what you're saying is in effect, going back to the analogy of some of some of, of nothing occurring. Consciousness and will is not um, conducive with physical laws. Really. Physical laws are completely uh, determinant on the laws. Like there's no point where the physical laws choose. Oh, maybe I'll do this or that. That's where the consciousness and choice comes into it. But that, that's not. That's that's the complete opposite of physical laws. So when they don't choose, yeah. hence the only real option then is they are going according to a regimented system, which is go which is going in a particular methodology, yeah. and hence that could only where then. Does that come from? So that I mean, again, this is where we're coming yeah, onto that. Yeah, so yeah. a creator, yeah. by definition, then would be that which is the prevailing entity, which makes everything go according to that grounded clockwork. There's, I'd like to see know, what is the other possibility there is. Well, I mean, I don't see why a creator needs to make those laws, and then you say, well, the creator is the thing that's always existed. Or you can say, oh, it's just the laws that have always existed, and there's no creator. Well, I think that's paradoxical, because the initial point you made was that the, the creator himself would be the source of that energy. Otherwise, what, where do we go to then? What would be that source of energy then? That, 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 that brought about the physical laws? Yes. I mean, who's to say that they, they, they needed a creator, right? This was your original argument. Yeah, absolutely. So You what? don't necessarily have to say something came from something else. But you see, what we're saying is something which is so humongous as the universe, it would have by necessity required something which is eternal and thus the source of everything. And it must have required a will, because what's the other explanation? A universe from nothing, we're going back to those sure. circular arguments, but essentially a universe from nothing, there's no other option. So that's too preposterous. Uh, I think I, I, I take your point on um, something being more likely to have always existed than being created from itself. Good. I don't think it's, a, it's a quite a big step to go into thinking about will uh, and a conscious creator. That's a whole, that's a whole other step for me. Um, but I think so, so, I mean, when it comes to, to humanity's religions, like I find them a lot easier to agree and take in, and like I can like um, I can get on board with a lot of things if I translate. So, and you know, make it less about man and human. And like when you talk about God, I can agree with a lot of the things you say. If if I think about that God as being the physical laws and blah blah blah. So um, yeah, it's good to think about. I'll have it. I'll have a read as well and okay. see if it can align with some of some of the and things. Just, just a final comment. Can yeah. I just ask you what has compelled you to come out on a Saturday afternoon to to have it? We, we all know the answer, but truth. just like your perspective. It's truth. 
It's yeah, the truth. I, that's, that's for me, that's ultimate truth is the most important thing. And um, I mean, sadly, genocides happen all over the world. Innocent people get killed all over the world. It's happening in Gaza, it's happening in Palestine. That's sad. That's not even the main reason I'm here. The main reason I'm here is it's just not reported on properly. The general public don't understand the situation. Very interesting perspective. Don't know about the De Balfour Declaration. We don't know about 1947. And I think if everyone knew the, the absolute truth, good. Well then said. we'd have a lot. We'd, there'd be a lot more peace in the world. So. Obviously, you're a well-educated person, so you're going to have that. So it's incumbent upon yourself to propagate this. Yes, it's, absolutely. It's, so you've done fabulously to come out here to protest. Yeah. But let's get knowledge. Yeah. imparted to the people and I think slowly it's coming out now I think so and I look around and you see how diverse the crowd is and, uh, fantastic I mean, it can only uh, can only give you a bit of hope anyway fantastic you're nice a gentleman thank you take care you have too. a great day thank you fabulous conversation there with our very pleasant scientist friend who um, you know spoke many fantastic sensible things there was some acceptance on this part of the possibility of a creator and he made very telling comments. He actually said the reason why he's come out here is specifically to, to that people don't realise these things, such as the Balfour Declaration of 1917. Who is how the Palestinians were screwed up by the British? The very same person who was the prime minister of this country, Theresa May, who came out in Parliament to blatantly say we're proud of the Balfour Declaration, the very declaration that has stuffed Palestine for the last hundred, nearly years. Thank you.